welcome back. Today's video is going to be a collaboration with the beautiful Melissa. Oh. Hey guys! <laughs> so she's also on YouTube. If you guys are not familiar with her channel, make sure to go check her out, subscribe to her. She also has a beauty um, channel. So you upload a lot of like makeup tutorials, right? Yes. Strictly makeup, mostly yeah. makeup. Yeah, so go check her out as well. I'll link her down below. But today we decided to collaborate because we thought of two really important topics. So on my channel, we're gonna do do's and don'ts on highlighting and contouring. And then on Melissa's channel, we filmed the do's and don'ts of foundation. Yes, so both very important and they you know, obviously go hand in hand together. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. And uh, yeah, once you're done watching this, go check out her video. Do it. I'm watching you. <laughs> okay, cool. I hope you guys enjoy this and let's get started. So number one is understanding the purpose of contouring. And this is something we both talked about. And a little background on Melissa and I, we're both makeup artists, right? So yes. you want to give a little bit of your like background, I guess? So I am also a freelance artist. I've been doing it for a couple years now. I've worked with many different clients on photo shoots, uh, TV shows. A little bit of everything yeah. that you get in LA. So she's definitely experienced. And then obviously, if you guys are new to my channel, I've been doing makeup for over 10 years. I started as like a freelance bridal makeup artist, and then I went into like all these other things, and now I strictly do YouTube, but I just love this because I feel like mm -hmm. I reach more of you guys. So <laughs> same here, I mostly do YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> so number one is understanding the purpose of highlighting and contouring. And that just means understanding your face structure, what you need to do to your specific, you know, bone structure. And that means if you have a narrow nose you don't go in and put you know bronzer on the sides of your nose to make it even more narrower because that's what majority of the people highlighting and contouring nowadays do so really understand what your needs are before you go into highlighting and contouring so I think the one thing that we all really need to understand is whether you need to correct or just add dimension to your face um, when it comes to contouring. So not everybody needs correctional contouring. Mm -hmm. For example, I have a really small nose already, so if I were to contour my nose, it would just look a little too extreme. Yeah. Um, so instead, I like to add a little dimension, and there's a difference between the two. It doesn't always have to be an intense cream contour. Yeah, so, so the do for this would be to really understand your structure. So for instance, um, I'll give you my face as an example as a do, and then we'll, we'll kind of talk yeah. about a don't. Um, so for me, I have a round face, and for me, it's really important to like kind of chisel my chin area. And so I like to put the bronzer directly on my bone right here versus under, which is what typical contouring is, I guess, like the trend. Um, so instead of putting the bronzer right here, I put it right on the bone because this is gonna really chisel this area. For me, I don't really have that narrow of a nose, so the typical and traditional contouring works for me, so I just kinda do two, um, lines kind of on the side and really blend it well and a don't for this would be not to follow a specific trend and contour a specific way that somebody else does it so that would be the typical you know chiseling the the jawline and then the sides of the nose forehead which is i mean for most people that works but i'm just saying like figure out what you need to do before you actually do those things another big thing too is the forehead. I think a lot of times I see people over contouring their forehead um, and if you already have a really narrow forehead you know you don't really don't need to do anything to it. It's already beautiful as it is so kind of really just look at yourself in the mirror and kind of examine mm -hmm. um, what features you want to accentuate, what features are already awesome. Yeah. And we all have awesome features so <laughs> just really take a look and see what it is that you need to do. Don't necessarily copy what someone else is doing because we all have different totally. faces. Totally. Amen to that. Like We all have different structures. I actually highlight and contour every single day. I mean, when I'm wearing makeup. Um, but I do it so lightly and I mostly use powder products. I just mm -hmm. literally dust a little bit of bronzer to give dimension. And my face is so round, I feel like, that it helps kind of chisel things down. And I look thinner. So for me, I kind of do that because it just makes me look I don't know, it just gives me more confidence. So I do it with powders because it's fast, easy, and it gets the job job done. And she's gorgeous regardless. Oh, so. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we're gonna explain the basics of highlighting and contouring in case you are completely new to this highlight and contour world. So what highlighting is, is bringing things out. So whatever feature that you're trying to accentuate, that's what highlighting does. And that you want to use a color that is lighter than your skin. And then bronzers, 
is what you use to contour and contouring is basically pushing things in. So if you want to chis chisel a certain area, you would use a bronzer for that. Next. Picking your shade is also very important and for that you want to use two to three shades lighter than your skin tone when it comes to highlighting and then two to three shades darker when it comes to contouring. Don't go to the extreme and pick the darkest foundation in that shade range. So like for example if you're looking at a brand, don't go and pick the darkest shade and same thing for the highlight, don't pick the lightest shade because in the end it's not going to balance out with your skin tone you wanna do the two to three shades lighter. Yeah. So this next step is so important, you guys. I mean, I can't even stress this enough. I say this in every single tutorial, but blending is key. So even when you think you're done blending, blend, blend some more. a little more, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, whenever you put the product, whether it's cream or, or uh, powder, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you blend it really well. And you can have just a tiny bit of line right here that I do. I think that's fine, but when once you have too much, then it just doesn't look natural, you know? I just personally don't like that. So um, that's definitely a do for me is to really blend until there are no harsh edges. Just funny because I look back at some of my old work and it wasn't blended well whatsoever. Like I used to be like chiseled. Really? Yeah, but I didn't understand it, so. <laughs> okay. We live and learn, you know? <laughs> so what you don't wanna do is, you know, map out what you're gonna highlight and contour and then lightly blend it or leave it as is. Sometimes I'll even go back in with my foundation, that's my skin tone, and help um, use that to help blend it out so it looks really natural versus seeing like harsh lines. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you mentioned also, um, like for a contour, you want to blend upwards, downwards. I was just going to say that. That's so funny. Yeah. You read my mind. I was going to say, we got to talk about how to blend because this is a really important one. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So contours, you want to blend it upwards. So it's whether it's here or here, you want to use a brush, whatever brush you're using, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to blend upwards, just like that. And I like to like blend up and away. Yeah. And for the nose too, I like to just mm -hmm, blend mm -hmm. it upwards. You know, because you're bringing it in. Yeah, and almost um, think of like, I feel like, think of the direction that you want your face to go in. That doesn't yeah. really make sense, but no, like you want to lift and push back versus, you know, down and forward. Right. So you basically do it like, kind of like that. Mm -hmm. okay. Like going up versus yeah. like, versus like more like <laughs> towards the nose. Yeah. yeah. So next we want to talk about shimmery highlighters. I think it's important to have a glowy finish rather than a frosty finish. Mm -hmm. So make sure to really understand like when you're buying a highlighter, does it give you a beautiful glow when you test it on the back of your hand or does it give you more of a frosty finish? So yeah, a don't I guess would be not to get something frosty. Don't get something frosty and I mean it's fine if you do but just be a little more light-handed with it, with everything yeah. else. Don't don't go to the extreme, <laughs> like I did. Next, you want to make sure that you're placing the highlight and contour in the right places. So really, you know, think about where you're placing it, what you're trying to push in, and then directly place the contour there versus, you know, around there. You know, so placement's really important. Also, placement would be around the neck as well. I like to apply a little bit of bronzer on my neck to kind of match mm -hmm. my face. Um, and a don't would be, and don't forget to contour or bronze your neck to connect the makeup on the face of the body because if not, you'll look like a floating head of makeup. It looks really nice to connect it all. I know it sounds like a strange concept to add makeup to that area, but trust me, it makes all the difference. Yes. Last but not least, the baking. I think baking is also really important if you could just do very little at a time because I think this is what's going to make sure your contour and highlight doesn't move throughout the day, especially if you use, of course, uh, cream highlight and contour. So basically what you're doing here is setting everything in place, pushing all the product into your skin so that it does last and it doesn't move throughout the day. Don't go in with a ton of powder right off the bat because I think a lot of the times we see the before where people are like baking, but you don't, or it's like a still shot afterwards, but you don't see them like smiling afterwards after they've done it. And it can really accentuate fine lines and wrinkles that mm -hmm. weren't there before. It just makes everything a little more dramatic. So just use a little bit of powder. You don't need, you know, the whole bottle or the whole <laughs> jar, little by little. 
So that's it for this do's and don'ts video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And now that you're done watching this, thank you. Now you are going to head on over to Melissa's channel to check out the other video that we filmed together because I think these videos go hand in hand together. You know, it's really important to have a good foundation base before you do your highlight and contour. So yeah, check her video out. Subscribe to Melissa if you haven't already. And let me know what you want to see next in terms of the do's and don'ts because I am starting a series on my channel. So if you want to see a do's and don'ts for eyeshadow or whatever else it is, let me know in the comments below. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye guys. Surprise. <laughs> so Melissa's all, all, blah, blah, blah. so, blah, blah, blah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way. You know what? And I also stopped breathing. Like if I, when I talk, I stop breathing and oh, I'm just like trying so to get through funny. it. Don't pack on <laughs> Don't pack on the powder right away. It, you know, I don't even know what I'm trying to say at this point anymore. Yeah, just five. To more collabs. More collabs. Yay. Yes. Yeah.